If a person has the flu virus or influenza, the Bible oftentimes raises temperature to make it harder for the flu virus to live and make it harder for it to reproduce. Now, with the cold virus, which is kind of similar, it's different. The body usually will not have a high temperature like this. Now, with the flu virus, a person usually has a decrease in appetite. With the cold, well, their appetite is more normal. The flu virus will bring about chills, one of the symptoms. A person's head may be achy, like a headache, and a sickness can happen all of a sudden, all at once. With the cold, it's the opposite. There will be no chills, no headaches usually, and a sickness happens gradually, slowly, over time. Now, if an infected person coughs or sneezes, the virus can fly up to six feet away, pam. If a person is standing in the way, then that's not good for that person because the virus could land in the mouth or nose area and that person can inhale the virus. It gets in the lung area and it starts to throw a party and reproduce. And that's usually how it's spread. Another way is by touching the virus and then touching your face, which you should never touch your face. And also you should definitely wash your hands a lot. Now, as soon as the virus comes into contact with a cell, it invades and reproduces that way. Now, one cell can produce thousands and millions of little virus bacteria. Now, the virus starts to spread, and the infected person usually will not know they even have the flu virus. They won't have any symptoms until about two to five days later. Now, as soon as someone starts to cough or a fever and sneeze, that, of course, is when they are the most contagious and they can spread the virus. Since the body is trying to eliminate the, the virus from the body, that's why it does this. Now, the CDC, or the Center of Disease Control and Prevention in the United States, believes that a person is contagious one day before the symptoms even take place. Of course, if somebody's not coughing and sneezing, it's more harder for them to spread the virus. Now, this uh, contagious period when someone spreads the virus, usually lasts five to seven days in a normal adult. If someone's immune system is very weak, it can of course take many, many weeks. And also with young kids, it's usually about twice as long that contagious period than adults, simply because their immune system is weaker. The fact is, the, the more you come in contact with being sick, your immune system learns from it, it gets stronger and better, stuff like that. Now, when it comes to the flu, the best defense is really avoiding someone who's sick. <laughs> Build up your immune system, and of course, you can take the flu vaccine, which is there's some pros and cons to it. One of the many cons to the vaccine would be is that the virus is constantly changing and evolving, so as soon as you get the, uh, the vaccine, like three weeks later, it could be useless. And there's also some other cons to it, too. But whether you get it or not, you definitely should improve your immune system, which helps you overall. You can do this by, of course, washing your hands a lot, drinking lots of water, getting lots of rest. There's also tons of herbal remedies that can really boost your immune system and fight off infections and really reduce your chance of getting the flu. Just to throw out a few examples, olive leaf extract, definitely good. Black cumin seeds, amazing. Quercetin, garlic, ginger, and the list just continues for like a very, very long time. You should also really highly consider a multivitamin. Because if you're deficient in one vitamin, it could really weaken your immune system and increase the chance of you getting the flu. And, of course, our food doesn't have the vitamins and nutrients like it used to. That's just a fact. So a lot of reasons for that. Now, before you start, go out and start buying a whole bunch of dietary supplements to improve your health, there's some things you should be aware of. Over the last eight years, the FDA, just in the United States, recalled 237 different dietary supplements for actually harming people. They, they hurt people. Also, there's evidence that 110 dietary supplements that were known to be harmful were not recalled. And what this all means is that you should be careful when you buy dietary supplements because there's some crap and garbage out there. Now, government agencies in a lot of countries don't regulate supplements to ensure they're safe simply because they don't have the time and resources. To make things a little bit easier for you, because I'm sure your life is very busy and um, I've actually created a guide all about shopping for dietary supplements. They can make this whole task easier. 
Now this guide can help you identify a good supplement brand from a more risky choice, one you want to avoid. It shares some herbal remedies you should definitely should consider and some herbal choices that are horrible, do you more harm than good. Some of these herbs are actually in common items like tea. So it's great to be aware of. Plus a whole lot more stuff like uh, online resources, the true role of government agencies like the FDA which is just fascinating and uh, a whole lot more. Now if you're wondering how much it's going to cost you, they'll be very very happy to you know that it's completely free. So what excuse do you have not to at least take a glance at? Well, there's no good <laughs> excuse. So <laughs> you at least take a look at it and you can do that, you can learn more by simply clicking the link right below the video I made you right there. Well, uh, I'm sure you'll love that guide. I really appreciate your time. I hope you learned a few things about the flu. I helped a couple people out there. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And don't get sick. Take care.